Weather day here in Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark. Fans coming in, and maybe the best weather day we've had so far. It's the middle game of this three-game series: the Reds and the Nationals here on Fox Sports Ohio. On a pleasant Saturday afternoon, and welcome to Reds Baseball. I'm Jim Couch, along with Chris Welsh. You mentioned the middle game of this series here, the Reds and the Nationals. Game one last night was a bomb fest for the Reds. They hit six home runs in the game, and they now, Chris, have ten on the year, tying the uh, Major League record. Remember back in the old days when you had to dial eight for long distance? Well, the Reds were dialing eight last night at Great American Ballpark. Zach Cozart twice, Todd Frazier twice. I mean, it was a bomb fest, as you said. And these balls were hit all over the place. And this is a ball club, Jim, that has had a lot of home runs over the years. A lot of their scoring depends on home runs, just like it has so far this year. Ten home runs by six different players. Of the 26 runs the Reds have scored so far this year, 19 of those have come from home run balls. And maybe that can keep it going today. But Zach Cozart had his first multi-home run game last night. Todd Frazier had a multi-home run game last night as well. Now, one of the guys they're driving in has done a tremendous job on that leadoff spot so far this year and that Chris is Sin Shu Chu. Well you know when the Reds signed him the word was a Sin Shin Su Chu was an on-base monster. I mean an on-base percentage over his career up over 360. Well when you get on base 10 of your 20 plate appearances you are really setting the table for the guys in the middle of the lineup and so far he's done his job. He's played good defense. He's gotten on base. He's hit home runs. I mean nothing more than uh, you asked for that you can do. Six runs scored. He leads the league in that department so far. And he'll be in that leadoff spot again this afternoon for Dusty Baker's Ball Club. All right, coming up, the pitching matchup of this game. We get to the number five spot for the Reds. Mike Lee goes for Cincinnati. Lefty Ross Detweiler for the Nationals. of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds.
Well, as you can see right there, there are some fans here at the ballpark coming out in short sleeves. It is, as I mentioned, one of the best weather days of the year. Weather today brought to you by Eric Dieters, attorney at law. Let's take a look at our weather conditions brought to you by WKRC Weather Channel 12. They give us this. 59 degrees right now at game time, partly cloudy. The temperatures are expected to go into the mid 60s, maybe even high 60s by a little bit later on this afternoon. Pitching matchup. Let's start, Chris, with Mike Leak. Well, the much talked about Mike Leak in spring training. He didn't know whether he was going to have a job on this ball club or not, depending on whether Rolders Chapman would be moved to the rotation. But you can see what he did last year in career highs and starts. He won eight games. He has six games over 500 in his career. Not bad at all for a fifth starter. And he's a guy that's going to pitch the contact and get a lot of activity in the infield. Ross Detwater, big, tall left-hander. This six-foot-five lefty had a good earned run average. He is under 500 in his career, although he had a pretty good year last year. They've got big expectations for this tall young man out of the St. Louis area pitching for the Nationals. A lefty righty matchup today at Great American Ballpark. And he's made four starts in his career against the Reds, 0 and 3 against Cincinnati so far this year. All right, coming up, Mike Leak tries to keep it going with the first four in the rotation did, and that is a 2.01 ERA. Four starts, four quality starts so far. America for 36 straight years by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Book your stay at CincinnatiUSA.com and by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Reds and the Nationals meet for the second time in this three-game series. Day game today, another day game tomorrow. Big night here last night. Six home runs and a victory 15 to nothing by the Reds and now Davey Johnson will send this lineup out there this evening the uh, this afternoon I should say the former Reds manager his lineup looks like this. Denard Spann will lead off he'll be in center field then Jason Worth in right Bryce Harper in left cleanup hitters Ryan Zimmerman at third then Chad Tracy in for Adam LaRoche who has a bit of a stiff back. Ian Desmond is at short bottom three include Danny Espinosa at second Wilson Ramos does the catching. 
And batting ninth and pitching is Ross Detweiler. They'll face the right-hander, 25-year-old Mike Leake. Now, the one thing about being a number four or five starter in the rotation that you have a long time from the time that you last pitched in spring training to the time you finally get to toe the rubber regular season. That may have accounted a little bit for the problems that Dan Heron had last night for the Nationals. Let's hope that does not happen to Mike Leake today because he is a guy because the way he has to pitch with his stuff has to be right on the corners on the black on the knees and so on in order to get the job done easily. It's the first pitch strike in there to Denard Span who now lifts this pitch into shallow left field. Cozart out Heisey in Heisey makes the catch and a good start for Leak on the Reds. Span is retired. Take a look at the Reds defensively our forward defensive look. Heisey who just made that catch again out in left field makes his fourth straight start. Chu and Bruce the other two outfielders. Frazier and Cozart the left side. Phillips and Votto the right side. Devin Mezzarocco made his 2013 debut last night late. Gets his first start in this game here this afternoon. Mike Leak according to uh, what Chris is talking about last worked on the 27th of March in spring training against San Diego so he goes what nine days between appearances which is normally just about twice as long as you would normally be during a regular five man rotation. Jason Worth up there so far in the year two out of 16 with a home run last night in the game Worth was hitless in four he struck out one time. Tim McClellan calling the balls and strikes here this afternoon. Jerry Meals is at first. Marvin Hudson at second. Jordan Baker is the umpire down at third. Well, it's really obvious the way the Reds have wanted to pitch Jason Worth so far in this series. And Homer Bailey did a nice job just by staying away. They want to stay out of the middle end part of the plate he, and make him hit the ball the other way. To the left of the shortstop, and Kozart will make the play, and Worth is retired. Two up, two down. That Kozart, a pair of home runs last night. He was one of two Reds, along with a third baseman, Todd Frazier, who had a multi home run game. In fact, if you go Kozart and Frazier, the left side of the infield, shortstop and third, it's the first time in Reds franchise history. At the shortstop and the third baseman have had multi home run games on the same night. Well, you did a lot of homework last night, come up with that. Courtesy of the media relations department. Here's Bryce Harper with two men out. Harper held hitless for the first time this year. Last night he went 0 for 4. He had had two hits in each of the first three games of the season, those against the Marlins. Had an interesting conversation this morning with their manager of the Nats. Uh, Davey Johnson about Bryce Harper. You know, what have you seen different this year that you didn't see from Bryce Harper? And you know, it, it was a very interesting comment. And Davey Johnson's a guy who'll just tell it the way it is. You said last year Bryce Harper came on the scene when Dennis or when uh, Jason Worth was injured, got hot for 30 days, pitchers adjusted to Harper. Harper went into a slump for 30 days and he finally adjusted. He said a young player has to live through that. You can't read about it, you can't look at video, you have to live through it. And it's about not How about charging that? One. How about that catch by Lee on that blistering line drive off the bat of Bryce Harper? Quick reaction by number 44.
The uh, very nice catch of that line drive by Bryce Harper to end the bottom of the first. And now Dusty Baker's club gets to bat against the left hander Ross Detweiler. Dusty's victory last night, the 422nd of his Reds managerial career. And there you see number 1584 overall. Here's the Reds lineup this afternoon Jin Su Chu, Chris Heisey, Joey Votto at the top. Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, Todd Frazier in the middle, and the bottom three include Zach Kozak for the first time this year, Devin Mezzarocco, and Mike Leak against Ross Detweiler. Now the big tall left-hander right out of the St. Louis area in Missouri went to Missouri State, and that's where the Nationals picked him in the first round of the draft back in 2007. They've done a lot of work with his delivery. If you watch him today, he'll be a little bit across his body. The same way we talked about Jared Weaver, the opening day starter for the, the Angels. But he's much better than he once was. They've got high hopes that down the road, Detweiler can work his way into a, being a, a number two or three pitcher in a rotation. Interesting comment made by Steve McCaddy regarding the across the body approach of Detweiler. He said, you know, there's a decent amount of guys that do that. He said, you know, Bob Gibson did that a lot, too. He was pretty darn successful. There's one. Got any others? This thing what Steve McCaddy said. Well, you're right, you know, and, and I do agree with him because you don't want to change. I think what he's trying to say is you can't change a kid com completely sure. all at one time. A little bit at a time so he keeps the comfort level. And he's had a good minor league system, and he's, uh, a good minor league experience, and he's got good stuff. I mean, he throws 93, 94 miles an hour, has a curveball and a changeup. Is it a ball and a strike to Chu? Highlighted him in the uh, pregame. 10 for 20 in terms of getting on base this year. 20 plate appearances, been on 10 times. Hit wise, he's 5 out of 15. He was part of the home run parade last night. One of the six the Reds hit. He hit a solo shot in the fourth. Short hop played by the second baseman Espinosa, and Chu is retired to start the Reds' first inning. Yeah, that was a fastball that he grounds out the second base and he only throws three pitches. He's a throwback in that respect. Ross Detweiler is his fastball average is about 93. He throws out a lot. 80% of the time that's very high average for a fastball at the major league level. Curveball throws 13% of the time right around 79 to 80 and a change up at 84. So he's got good separation between his fastball and his change up and three quality pitches that he can throw over the plate. Would you, Chris, consider him a strikeout pitcher? No, I really wouldn't. Last year he had 164 innings and he struck out right around 105. So, I mean, a strikeout pitcher comes closer to striking out one batter per inning. But, I mean, I'm a little reluctant to categorize a guy as a strikeout pitcher or not. I'd rather categorize a pitcher as a fly ball pitcher or a ground ball pitcher, a guy that you can run on, who you can't run on, a guy that has an out pitch that you don't want to see, so you should swing early in the count, that kind of stuff. Tap it on the right side of the mound, and Detweiler will get Heisey at first, although, boy, you can really see Heisey hustling down the line. Two out for Votto. Ford dealers, defensive look at the Washington Nationals. Bryce Harper, Denard Spann, Jason Worth across the outfield, Ryan Zimmerman, Ian Desmond on the left side. Danny Espinosa, Chad Tracy getting this done at first. On the right side, Ross Deltweiler throws to Wilson Ramos. This is their fifth game of the year, and Ramos is making his third start behind the plate. There's last year's National League Rookie of the Year. Bryce Harper out in left field. Talked last night about the fact that he played a good deal of center field last year, but the Nationals acquired Denard Spann in the offseason, trade Michael Morris. And the former catcher in his uh, amateur days, Harper is now an outfielder. A transition that he's made pretty darn well. Vada with two men out, nobody on. So he comes into the game at four for 14 with a run batted in. That was the game winning RBI on Wednesday night. Last night, a three for four game. Nationals went down in order, and Detweiler trying to do the same to the Reds in the bottom of the first. This is the second game to start in the National League today. They're also playing at City Field in New York during the first inning there. Miami, which won its first game of the season last night after being swept by these Nationals. 
Leading early in that one, one nothing. That one knocks Votto down, and he goes right onto the stomach in the batter's box. I think it got him. They're going to give him first base. Tim McClellan says yes. That ball did clip. It appeared the uniform of Joey Votto. He takes first base. Nothing out of the Nationals dugout. Let's take a look. I don't think this was intentional. And I also don't think it actually hit Joey Votto, although he think it might have. It came so close. I think that's just a, a product of throwing across your body and not getting your arm catching up with your legs. Good slow motion right there brought to you by for our performance Honda Exmo and it did not get Bono but he'll get first base and fortunately everybody's a okay. I'd hate to see that right there that one pitch spark some kind of an incident between these two ball clubs. Here's Phillips with Votto and a pretty good lead over there at first being held by Tracy. Brandon fouls it back. Phillips read some tweets last night after the game and interested in your thought on as you mentioned uh, you'd hate to see that hit batsman spark something the Reds scored that run in the eighth inning last night of double by Bruce single to right by Frazier they waved the runner in and made it 15 nothing at the time do you think the Nationals may have thought that that run could have been held up to right field worth is there and the inning is over I'll get back to you on that okay no score through one. Serious injuries called 1 800 Elk Ohio. Let's talk starting pitching, Chris. How about that? Well, the Reds starting pitching in the first four games. I mean, how much better can you expect it to be? They're 2 0, 2.4 earned run average collectively. You go through Cueto, Latos, Arroyo. You know, last night, Homer Bailey throwing the ball 95, really, wherever he wanted to. And, you know, there's really no weakness in the starting five. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, hey, what about Mike Lee? I mean, fifth starter, you know, he had a bad year last year. Why are they hanging around with him? I think what people don't understand that the fifth starting spot in baseball is the hardest job to keep in all the sports. Sure. Because every year when you evaluate your ball club, you try to, you know, get better from the bottom up. And that fifth starting spot seemingly always open for grabs, but it really isn't here. 
we, until somebody can unseat him. You talked about Ross Detweiler, the number five starter for the Nationals, being career-wise under 500 at 16 and 22. Here you have Leak into his fourth year. He's over 500 by six games at 28 and 22. I think a lot of teams would like to have Mike Leak in their rotation. But he knows he's got to go out there and pitch and perform. He gets Ryan Zimmerman to start the second. And he gets a ground ball to Phillips ranging to his right. Brandon will make the play and Zimmerman is gone. For out number one. What I really like about Mike Leak is that when he's on his game, he pitches very fast. I mean, between pitches, keeps the pace going. He changes speeds well. And he throws a lot of strikes. And I think as long as you do that, that's a formula that's going to breed success. He's got a very good infield behind him, good outfield defense. He might as well let those guys earn their money. Chad Tracy batting for the first time this year. Let's go back to what we were talking about in the bottom of the first inning. Did the Reds send a runner maybe when they didn't need yeah, to? Yeah, I remember that play, and I thought fleetingly the same thing when I saw Jay Bruce being waved around third. And my answer to that is no. I mean, I don't think there is such a thing as running up the score in baseball. That's going to be a hit for Tracy into center field. He broke his bat in the process. Business end of that thing ends up way down near first base. First base runner for the Nationals, a one out single. Now, there might be at the amateur level uh, when you're running guys uh, extra bases on pass balls and wild pitches and so on, but but I think when it comes to baseball, I mean, after all, Dusty Baker essentially emptied the bench sure. and put in every second play, you know, second string player that he had. Xavier Paul comes off the bench and hits a grand slam. You can't tell these players individually. I don't want you to try your best and I can't remember who hit that single that drove in Jay Bruce but I mean are you going to rob him of a potential run batted in at the end of the year. It was Frazier who was hit Frazier. the ball All in right. the right. So you think about it, if you're if you're Todd Frazier's agent and you say well you know we're going to base our our uh, negotiations on what he did as far as numbers this year and how many times might that happen where he knocks a run in and it, it guy gets held up at third because the, the score was already blown up. I can completely understand it from a red standpoint. I guess what we're trying to get to also is if you're on the other side if you're on the national side do you think that they thought you know they could have held that guy at third. Well I can tell you that maybe they're looking for motivation and getting beat 15 to zip for, ought to provide enough motivation. Fair enough. Ian Desmond is the man at the plate. He's two out of 14 this year. He had a hit last night, one for four. He's the national shortstop. Good fastball hitter. They tried to throw him some breaking balls last night. Always ready for that number one is Desmond. He's got that slightly open stance. Now he's at a ball and a strike. Make that two balls and a strike. Big crowd on hand here at Great American Ballpark. As we talked about earlier, this is a double header day baseball wise here at the stadium. After this game, a collegiate contest between the University of Cincinnati and the University of Louisville. Great leaks move the first, Chris. You know, Jim, we talked about Ross Detweiler, the national starter, being very simple. He's got three pitches, fastball, curveball, change. But Mike Leake, by contrast, is a little bit more complicated. He throws five different pitches, and he moves them all around. He throws his fastball at 46 percent of the time. Then he's got his cutter at 24 percent of the time. So you add those up. Those are both kind of fastballs. He throws a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. And I think sometimes when Leak runs into problems, those pitches kind of blend all together. There's not a lot of speed difference between his fastest and his slowest. In the right field, sending Bruce to the track, and Bruce will have room to haul it in. And Desmond is retired. Tracy retreats to first base. Now with the way the ball was flying out of here last night, anytime the ball goes in the air like that and you're on the mound, you're holding your breath. You see Jay Bruce often running to the right field gap. You're thinking, oh, please come back. Well, six of them last night for the Reds. It gives them 10 on the year. They're tied with Colorado for the lead in Major League Baseball through the first four games of the year for the most home runs. But the most interesting number of that is they hit six last night, meaning they have. 
They hit more in one game than 25 teams have hit so far this year in the big leagues. That's the amazing number well, you of that. Were a play study. That is a Josh Hall stat right there. Well, I know he stays up late studying. We know that. Runner aboard with two out. No score. We're in the top of the second. Reds trying to make it four in a row in the win side of things after the opening day loss. Into right center field off the bat of Espinosa. This could give the Nationals the lead. Here comes the throw in. They will hold the runner to the Nationals at third. Trent Jewett. Put the stop sign on Chad Tracy as he chugged into third base. That's a double for the switch hitting Espinosa. And they knock on the door, second and third with two out. You know, one thing you notice when you really boil down the numbers about Mike Leak is that a lot of times he gets hurt early in the count. His first pitch or his second pitch or even his third pitch. Those are the ones that are the toughest for him to get by. And this one pretty much a get ahead fastball to Espinosa who lines it over the the head of Chu in right center field and gets an easy double. Third hit of the year for Espinosa. Two of them have been doubles. And now with two out and the catcher up, they will elect with the Reds to put him on intentionally and face the right handed hitting, left handed throwing Detweiler. That's a good call right here. I mean, I think it's a no brainer. You certainly don't want to take a shot right here and let Wilson Ramos come up and ruin your day by punching in a base hit when you've got the pitcher in the on deck circle. Well, the Nationals will have the bases loaded with two men out and their pitcher up here in the top of the second. These two teams come in with identical records into this game, each at three wins and one loss. Reds actually are atop the National League Center with that mark. The Nationals and the Braves are three and one in the National League East. No undefeated teams left after the Nationals lost last night. No teams without a.